Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. Shaker Heights School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Brian Child here with the students. How do you hear me? How you doing, sir? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. Here's our first question. My name is Celia from Fernway Elementary. My question is, after all the training and preparations for going to the ISS, what is one thing you were not prepared for and how did you deal with it? Wow, that's a great question. So we spend quite a few years getting ready to come up to the International Space Station. And the one thing that we cannot simulate on the ground is microgravity and things float while we're up here as you can see i'll float mark is floating and so it really takes a lot of effort to learn how to control that when i set things down on the ground you can let it go and it sits there but in space it'll float away and the way you deal with it is every now and then you lose things as we all know um, but then you learn to use velcro and you learn to keep track of all your stuff so it takes a little bit of time to get used to that Hi, my name is Benjamin. Um, Roman Elementary. My question is why are spaces white? That's another great question. So I can't say with certainty why they're white. I can tell you that one of the things the benefits of a white spacesuit is that the color white reflects light better and absorbs heat worse. So if you're in an environment where you need to reject heat as much as possible, white works well. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Leslie from Woodbury Elementary. My question is, do your cells in your body adapt to the change from being on Earth to being in space? How? And I think the question was asking about how the body adapts to being in space, hopefully. Um, so I'll answer that one. It's amazing how the body can get used to being in a different environment so quickly. The first couple of days, for me personally, I don't feel good when I come to space or when I go back to Earth. But after just a couple of days, it feels like we were born to be in space. You learn how to move, you learn how to use your feet, and it becomes very, very natural. So our bodies are pretty good for adapting to different environments. Hi, my name is Haley from the middle school. My question is, we know you both took part in the recent spacewalks. Can you describe the first feeling you experienced when you were outside and saw the earth as you were floating above it? Uh, honestly, my first thought was, be careful, don't make a mistake. Um, we've trained a lot for that event, but somehow the uh, it really hit home when I was outside and I could look in any direction and see the horizon of the earth or the blackness of space and there was nothing between me and it and it literally other than some some uh, few particles of the atmosphere um, the very first impression I had was in the airlock where it's kind of a small tube if you can imagine two people in a tube there's lights on but it's all indoor lighting and then when the commander who was doing the spacewalk with me opened the hatch, it suddenly felt like we were going outside because we got this intense bright light coming off of the earth reflected from the sun that came into the airlock and changed the feeling in the airlock. And suddenly I felt like, wow, we're really going to go outside in space.
Hi, my name is Drake McCandless from Mercer Elementary. My question is, what inspired you to be an astronaut? <laughs> Wow. So when I was uh, when I was really young, probably younger than you, um, I would watch the films. And film is this old thing we used to use to watch to watch things. Um, and so I would watch the film of the astronauts walking on the moon as part of the Apollo missions. And I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. I would love to do that someday. Uh, of course, it was just a dream of mine. And then I read a lot of science fiction books, and I still like them. And I would read about people going to different planets and doing all kinds of crazy things. And that just kind of kept the dream alive. And so I think from a very young age, I thought it would be a cool job. Um, I thought it would be great to go and explore. And when I was uh, teaching middle school, before I became an astronaut, I saw they were looking for astronauts. And they wanted teachers to become astronauts. And I said, wow, this is my chance. Maybe I can get the job. And so I applied. and. Here I am today on the space station, so it's kind of cool. Hi, my name is Paco from Boulevard Elementary. My question is, are you super scared while going out in space away from Earth and while you are actually out in space? Would you mind repeating that question? Hi, my name is Poplar from Boulevard Elementary. My question is, were you super scared about going out in space away from Earth and while you were actually out in space? Um, I, I, I was, there was certainly, fear was a factor. I was very attentive. I'm not so certain I was afraid more of physical harm or afraid of just making a mistake. Um, there's so much invested in getting us ready that my, and, and so many people are supporting us that the last thing I wanted to do was let anybody down. Um, and I can tell you the second time I did a spacewalk that I really wasn't nearly as uh, concerned as the first time. I realized that physics was on my side and if I let go of something, without pushing hard, I would just stay floating right there. So it took much less effort um, when, I, when I really kind of started getting in, an instinctual feel for the fact that uh, unless I moved really fast, I wasn't going to move very fast. I was going to go ahead and stay put without any effort at all. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we don't have the supermarket, so we can't go to the store to get food. But we do have what we call cargo vehicles that will come up a few times a year. We actually have one coming up in the next couple of weeks, and it'll bring us all kinds of food, all kinds of supplies. Uh, but one thing we've been doing just recently is we're growing some plants. So now we're kind of making our own food. It's not a lot, but we're learning how to do that better in space. Hi, my name is Kirsten from Roman Elementary. My question is, how do you talk to friends and family? So we're very fortunate because on the International Space Station, we have an internet protocol phone. So basically with satellites, we're able to use the internet and talk to our families. Um, it's not quite as good as being on the ground because so the space station has large objects that can interfere with the satellites. Um, so sometimes it's broken up, but really it's very convenient. We can, we can dial just about any phone number. Hi, my name is Kira from the high school. My question is, were you able to see and predict the paths of hurricanes from space during this hurricane? So I think it's important for us to go to space because it is a challenging endeavor. 
that focuses our attention and the, uh, the attention of science into uh, learning new things. Uh, it also gives us opportunities. So first of all, by, by focusing on doing challenging things, we end up with lots of what we call spin-off technologies, things that we get unexpectedly that help our lives in the ground right away. Also, because um, when you do science experiments, it's good to, take a, to try to change variables and see how things react to get a better understanding of how things work. Well, here on the space station, we're able to take a, we're able to have a sense of weightlessness up here, and so then we can see how how things behave from combustion to plant growth, without that uh, sense of up or down to affect it, and that helps us to better understand how things really work, and then that helps us out in the future. And then I really think the human spirit has a strong desire to explore, and it helps us put perspective on where we live now and understand better how we got here and what uh, the future might hold. Hi, my name is Ailey from Woodbury Elementary. My question is, if a serious emergency happened while you were in space, what would you do and would you be able to contact NASA back on Earth? Yes, hopefully. Um, so we do train for various types of emergencies, and they could be anything from maybe a fire or something might hit us and we get a hole in the space station. Uh, maybe something goes into the atmosphere, but then we could have one of us that might get sick. Um, we might injure ourselves doing work. And so the first thing we would do, it depends on what it is, we'll react to the immediate emergency if it's a medical emergency, we will call Mission Control and try to talk to one of the flight surgeons there. Uh, we have some training, but Mark probably doesn't want me doing too much on him if he has an injury. Uh, but having the ground help us in all cases is really important. And if it is something super, super serious, we always have our Soyuz spacecraft that brought us here, and we can hop in that at any time, and we can undock from the space station and then head back home. So we train a lot for it. Um, we're fortunate so far. Everything's been going well, and we'll continue to, to keep that trend going. Hi, my name is Jalen from Bolivar Elementary. My question is, can you describe what a typical day on the IS is like? Sure, so basically I would say 6 in the morning is when we wake up, 7.30 we have a meeting to, with the ground to talk about how the, what's uh, going to either changes or what's going what's to happen at the day. We've got a schedule that's been uh, uploaded for us and we, we uh, work that schedule the whole day. Typically we've got about an hour for lunch, right? Yeah, kind of. But we spend much less than that actually eating lunch. And uh, we work till about 7.30. Part of the work day, though, includes a couple hours, maybe two and a half hours to exercise. And then after 7.30, we have, an, at around 7.30, we have another meeting with the ground. And then we have time to get ready for bed, which includes having dinner. Hi, my name is Anya from Fernway Elementary. My question is, what are the qualifications for going into outer space? Well, that's a pretty interesting question because when you look at the astronauts that are up here, we all have very different backgrounds. Um, but the one thing that we all have in common is we all studied something in the sciences, the engineer, in engineering or mathematics. Um, and we all have a desire to be in the space, and we all had the dream of coming to space. So today, if you want to become an astronaut, you need to have a degree in one of those fields and then a certain amount of experience. Um, but hopefully someday we can have people go into space uh, on a more regular basis because all of us have different qualifications, and all of those can be very beneficial to living in space and maybe living on a habitat in a different planet. Hi, 
My name is Isaac from Onaway Elementary. My question is, have you made any important discoveries yet? There's so many important discoveries that we're trying to make sure we pick out a really good one. I can tell you just one that I'm aware of off the top of my head. Um, and really, it, I'm not sure that it was a discovery so much as a potential, an item with potential. Um, there's a lot of hope that some lung tissues that we've grown on, on in the space station may help contribute to finding a, a cure for cancer. There's also been a lot of un, uh, learning about regenerating water and making it clean. So we actually recycle all of our, all of the fluid from sweat to other stuff. And uh, that's a useful technology to use on the ground. So that's helped contribute to making pure water in places where it's hard to get. And um, good <laughs> that's all I got right now hi my name is Gobby from Musa Elementary my question is how come it's so hard to get through the Earth's atmosphere so Mark is the smart one so he's gonna answer that one he he was a physics teacher So it's hard getting through the Earth's atmosphere just because of the speed that we uh, are moving at. So right now, we're moving four miles a second. And if we want to land on the Earth, we want to be going at roughly zero miles per second relative to the surface of the Earth. And we actually use the atmosphere to slow us down. So that there's a lot of friction, and that generates heat. So that's why uh, going through the atmosphere is hard. It's just the speed at which we're moving. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question, please? Are there germs in space? My name is Brooklyn from Walmart. Okay, so the question about uh, germs in space. Yes, there are germs in space. Um, I'm not sure why I looked at Mark, but uh, so we all have germs in our body, on the outside of our body. Uh, but a lot of those are beneficial to us. Uh, we do spend a lot of time cleaning the space station uh, every weekend. So if you think you have your chores at home, we have ours as well, where if you were to see us on a Saturday morning, we're like little ants running around cleaning the space station to make sure that some of those bad germs don't take place and start growing some more. Uh, they are valuable to us as well. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Shaker Heights Schools. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.